Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a quick look at the Arduino Slack API I wrote and is available on the library manager now. You probably know what Slack is if you're watching this video, but if you don't, it's basically a grown-up version of Discord, or if you've ever used Microsoft Teams, it's what they try to copy. So I think they describe themselves as a collaboration tool. It's a, a thing where teams can get together and you can create channels to have different discussions in it and it has really good integrations with different things and you know you can format your messages nicely and it's actually quite a good tool. The library that I've written is just a tiny subsection of the Slack API library and it has to do with basically setting a custom message for yourself. So you can see here I have the peace sign with I am the second status there at the moment so I can set both this emoji and this status message. And the other thing that I can do is set my presence, which is this green icon here. Now it's important to note that you can't actually force it to be green. All you can do is make it automatic and it will turn green if you're active or you can set it to be away. So the idea behind this came from Becky Stern. She wanted to build a project that she could set a custom status. And if you check out her channel, she'll have a build video on it when this video is live. To get started with this library, you'll first need to get an auth token. So if you scroll down on the readme, there's instructions for that here. So if we create a new Slack app and create app, we'll call it Arduino test three. And then you want to, uh, for the development Slack workspace, you want to select the workspace that is going to get impacted when you set your status. So if you've one shared work or whatever, this would be the work place you'd select the workspace. So I'm just going to select Arduino test two and click create app. I'm going to click create app. Okay. And that is that. So if we go back to the instructions, then name your app, anything and set the development workspace. So we already did that. This will bring us to a new page. And on the left hand side of the menu is a click OAuth and permissions. So if you go down here, you'll see OAuth and permissions and we'll click that. Go down to scopes, then under user token scopes, click add an OAuth scope. Okay, so we go down to scopes, user token scope. So we'll add OAuth scope. And then I have a list of the ones that you'll need. So set presence will require users right. So we'll just copy that. Uh, users right. And then we'll add another one here and we'll get users profile right. And that will be for set custom status. And that is that part of it. And then scroll up to the top of the page and click install app to workspace. So install app to workspace. You'll have to give a permission to install. Click allow. And then you get your OAuth token here. So you'll see, you can just click this copy button and this will be the token that you need to include in your sketch. To get set up using the library, hopefully by the time the video is released, you'll just need to go to sketch, include library, manage libraries. And when that loads, you should just be able to search for Slack and it should show up. As you can see, it doesn't yet. This library has a dependency and it's on Arduino JSON. So if you just search for Arduino JSON and install this first one by Benoit Blanchon, so it should be version six. It doesn't really matter which version of six, but it can't be version five. So if you still have version five installed for some older libraries, me being one of the main contributors to them not being upgraded, then you can use the portable installation version I thought I talked about in a previous video, and I'll link to that up in the corner. Once you have everything installed, you can just go to file and examples. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you should see an Arduino Slack API. And then depending on which board you want to use, so uh, we'll pick the ESP8266 and we'll do the set custom status message. 
Okay, so when that opens, we'll need to do two things to this. Um, first of all, we'll need to update the SSID and password of our Wi-Fi, so that should be pretty standard. And then we'll need to take the access token that we got earlier on and update that too. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that as part of the example, I'm using the set fingerprint method, so the slack fingerprint that is included with the library. So that's a, a define in the library file. This may change every now and again. So if it stops working for whatever reason, maybe you need to update the fingerprint and that should fix it. But uh, yeah, if that happens, you can let me know in a GitHub issue and I'll take a look. Then the only other thing that you might want to change is what the status gets changed to. So you can see here that there is a slack dot set custom status uh, command. So what this code will do here is basically just toggle between two different statuses, I think every 10 seconds or five seconds or something like that. And yeah, so you can just put whatever string of text you want to put in as the status here. And then you need to put in a code for an emoji after that. It also is possible to put in a third parameter, which is the a Unix timestamp for when this status should expire. So say you're going for a walk with your dog and you think you're going to be 30 minutes, you could add 30 minutes onto the current Unix timestamp and it would expire. I haven't really played around with this at all. I just checked that it works and I think it does, but yeah, it should. To see a list of the different emojis you can use, I used this cheat sheet by WebFX. So if you scroll down and find the emoji you want, so say you want this cactus, you can just copy this piece of text to the side. It seems like it's copied it for me already. But uh, then if you go back to your example, set custom status, you can just update that string there to be cactus and that should work for you now. And just to prove that it is working, let's change this to I am a cactus. Okay, so it's read only, so I need to save it as something. So I'll just save it as set custom status and we'll try that out now. So once that's uploaded, you should check on the serial monitor that it is working as you'd expect. So you can see here that it says the profile, I am a cactus, and then the emoji is cactus. So it, it actually returns the profile to you when you set your status. So you can confirm that it is set. And then you can see the status text is I am second status with the peace sign emoji. And then if we go look at Slack, you can see that the status is I am the second status at the moment. So if I reset the board, it should force it to set the cactus status. We'll hopefully see that happen in real time. And there we go. I am a cactus has been set and we should see a change again now in a few seconds to go back to the second status. This is just an example that changes based on time. So it's changing every 30 seconds. So you wouldn't normally do this. You would normally change the status based on a button press or, or something. But the reason I do it just as time for uh, a library like this or an example like this is that you don't have to hook up any buttons to see it working. Like you can just test it out. Like if these two things are, are working for you with the timed one, you should be easily able to adapt it to, you know, a button press. Or you can do something creative, like hook it up to a temperature sensor. And if it's over a certain temperature, set your status to I'm melting or it's too cold or whatever. So yeah, you get the idea. The set presence example is also really similar. So if you just go to examples, Adafruit Slack, or Adafruit, Arduino Slack, ESP8266, if that's the one you're using, and then set presence. And if you open that up, you'll see that it requires the same access token. So you can just use the same one as before. Same thing about the fingerprint. And then you can see here, there's a slack.setPresence and there is a define for the auto one. So slack presence auto, 
and there's a define for the slack presence away and that's the only ones that there are there is no set status i'm here it's just auto or away so yeah that works pretty well too to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty of it, as I mentioned, this is just a small piece of the Slack API and what's available. I also was surprised I didn't need to go through kind of proper OAuth um, to do this, but I think it makes sense in this scenario because you're not, you know, it'll always be tied to your account realistically, you know, as in you won't have an Arduino update or for someone else's account so the fact that you can just use this dev mode or whatever so you don't need to do an official oauth flow i think makes sense um although it is possible to do that i have that working on the spotify api library that i've been working on so yeah it wouldn't have been a problem to do it but i think this is just so much easier to get set up so why not if you're looking to add more features to this library, feel free. Um, a good place to check out would be the Arduino API video that I made before around, you know, steps to making an API library or making API calls on, uh, on an ESP8266. Basically, you want to do as much work as you can using Postman or some other tool that's not on the Arduino to figure out exactly what you need and, you know, is that information possible to get? It's much quicker to do that kind of development not on the Arduino than to write the code for the Arduino and figure that the request would never have worked. So some other things that I think are kind of interesting. Um, recently, I've been doing a project where using the D1 HID shield that I've been working on, where I'm using serial to communicate with the CH552 chip. And my libraries tend to be a little bit noisy. Like if something fails, it prints to the serial monitor or, or whatever. And I wanted to, in the future, have a way of just disabling serial altogether. So if you wanted the library to be completely silent, it would be possible for you to do that. And that would be useful in the case where you're using the UART for something else. So I have this hash define slack enable serial that if you comment out, it will disable the serial from the library altogether. And in a similar vein, I have a hash define slack enable debug. So that's debug messages that get printed to the serial monitor, which is off by default. And what I think is actually kind of nice about this is this is where it gets defined here. So if Slack enable serial is defined, there is new defines Slack serial, which takes a string, calls serial print str, and then Slack serial ln calls serial print ln with the string. And if Slack enable is not set, it will just do these ones here, which are empty kind of placeholders for that Slack serial. So nothing will be done when it's called. And it's the same with the debug one as well. So if we look at the CPP, then you'll see here, there's a call to Slack debug serial using just a string, and that will be passed on to the serial monitor if it is enabled or not. So you'll see here, there's a good few debug ones, but then here's a one which would normally be an error message that's just to the regular slack serial so that is one approach to being able to decide if messages get printed to the serial monitor or not from a library i don't know if it's the best approach but i think it works pretty well so i'm pretty happy with it another nice thing about this library is there are no strings used whatsoever so that should be good from a memory usage point of view, I'm using character arrays to pass the strings between them, but I'm talking about the Arduino string object, which can cause memory issues or use up more of your heap and cause fragmentation issues. But um, yeah, I'm not sure how big of a deal that is. I've just heard that it's better to not use strings, so I am not using strings. And yeah, it seems to be working fine. So yeah, I'm happy enough with how it goes. 
If you have any questions around this library or making API requests in general, feel free to reach out to me on my Discord. There's a lot of helpful people there who will be able to help you if I can't. And also, it's a much easier place to answer questions than in the YouTube comments because YouTube Studio is not that good and doesn't support formatting and even linking away isn't that great. So Discord is definitely a much easier place to uh, answer your questions. I just want to say a huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors for helping support the channel and helping me create open source software such as this. And that's pretty much it. If you haven't already, make sure you check out Becky's build video. That'll be a much nicer example of what you can do with the library than just the basic examples. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.